Let's start with this statement. A 37 degree angle is acute. We're going to write this as a conditional statement. Write its converse, its inverse, and its contrapositive. So, let's get started with our introduction to formal logic. I'll first start by saying, if the measure of an angle is equal to 37 degrees, then the angle is acute. You notice these are all going to be in the if-then form. The if part, that's going to be our hypothesis, is followed by our conclusion. Then, in this case, the angle is acute. Now, we're going to take this statement and we are going to reverse it. Reverse it means I'm going to start with my conclusion and point in the other direction. It may look like this. If an angle is acute, then its measure is 30 deg 37 degrees. You know, at this point, I'm going to introduce some symbols that you might find helpful. As you've probably heard, mind your P's and Q's, I'm going to state this one, P implies Q. This arrow, always written with a double strike, looks a lot like this. Um, that's going to be my conditional, my first, imply, my first statement, sometimes called an implication. When I reverse it, I'll just say Q implies P, my converse. Now, I'm moving down to my next two. Honestly, we use these a little less seldom in this course, but we have to know them. Inverse, if I were to read this statement, not P implies not Q. That tilde mark that you see there, it's going to have another meaning later on in this course for similarity, but right now it is the negation symbol. So that's universal in mathematics, and let's see if I can take this statement and take the reverse of the hypothesis and the conclusion. So, I guess I would say, if the measure of an angle is not 37 degrees, then the angle is not acute. So, and you see we've got the negation on both the if and the then statement. So, let's wrap this up with the contrapositive. So, I'm going to take this statement and I'll take the negation of each. In other words, I'll say, if an angle is not acute, then its measure is not 37 degrees. So there you go. You've got um, four statements all related to this phrase. And we haven't even mentioned truth at all. Start with this one. If the measure of an angle is 37, the angle is acute. I know that. I know that, and that fits in my definition. So I'm going to give this a statement or this value of true. I look at the converse. I reverse that statement. If an angle is acute, then its measure is 37. Well, um, I've got a couple angles over here. I've got a 37 degree angle here, and I've got a, an acute angle. Of course, an acute angle can vary. If it's acute, maybe it's going to be 87. Maybe it's going to be 17. It doesn't have to be 37. If it's not true all the time, we assign it a value of false. So not true all the time, false. I look at the next statement. If the measure of an angle is not 37, then it's not acute. Well, we've if I just said again, 20, that looks acute to me. How about 88? That's acute to me. So this statement would appear to have a value of false as well. Going back to the final statement, the contrapositive, not Q, if it's not acute, well, it can't be 37. That's going to have a value of true. And I see this pattern, true, false, false, true. Hmm. I guess it's worth mentioning now that the first statement, that's my conditional statement, and its contrapositive are logical equivalents. These must always have the same truth value, whether that is true or false. The middle statements, the converse and the inverse, are also logical equivalents and must also have the same value. In this case, they're both false. They could both be true, but these two have to match and these two have to match. So there's an example where we have 
a conditional statement whose converse is not true. Let's go look at another one and compare. Let's start with this conditional statement, and I'm going to say that the P, in this case, the hypothesis is if the measure of an angle is between 0 and 90. Then the Q, my conclusion is, the angle is acute. So if the measure is between 0 and 90, the angle is acute. I can reverse that, taking the converse. If an angle is acute, then its measure is between 0 and 90. The inverse, we're getting good at this. I take this statement and I take the negation of both hypothesis and conclusion. If the measure of an angle is not between 0 and 90, then the angle is not acute. Notice you don't say something like obtuse here. We just say it's not acute. Now let's move on to the last, the contrapositive. Again, I take the converse and I take the negation of both statements, parts of the statement. If an angle is not acute, then its measure is not between 0 and 90. Well, uh, assigning truth to this, this first statement sounds very true. When I reverse the statement, it also appears to be true, mostly because it is. So is this one, and so is this one. And therefore, what we have, I've got, as we said before, the first and fourth statements have to match in truth. They're both true. The middle two statements have to match. They are both true. In this case, all four of these statements, logical statements, are true. This particular um, conditional statement happens to be a definition. And we're going to see later on in this text, anytime we have a definition, they are reversible, which means this statement and this statement are both going to be true, and consequently all of them. But as you see, we're going to be mostly concerned with the conditional statement and the converse. So let's try one more example. Let's try another definition. Here I've got a pair of lines that intersect to form a right angle. And I'm going to make this statement. If two lines intersect to form a right angle, then the lines are perpendicular. Now I've stated that as a definition. I'm going to let you in on a secret. All definitions are reversible. Well, I guess I said this a little while ago. So if P implies Q, then Q implies P. So let's just take this and write the converse of my original definition, or the direction it's stated, I should say. And I'll just reverse it. If two lines are perpendicular, then they intersect to form a right angle. I like that. Now, maybe when I get really good at proofs, I might even start throwing in a little shorthand, and a lot could be said with something like this. Right. I've got right angles, implies perpendicular lines, perpendicular lines, right angles. But this is the true form that we should write if we want to be more accurate. All right, I hope this is helpful, and we're going to be moving on to proofs pretty soon.